I think I'm muted. Am I, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, hello everybody and, and welcome to the We The People finals and thank you for doing this. We're very excited to see you. Um, my name is Darcy Kern. I am a history professor at Southern Connecticut State University and I am an alumna of the program. So I've been where you are, but not quite in the virtual scenario. So we're, like I said, we're excited to see you. Hi, my name is Miriam Mamar Sadegi. I participated in We the People program the first year it was offered on the bicentennial of the US Constitution. I am so excited to be with you and so proud of you um, and um, look forward to this. Hi, my name is Christopher Riano. I'm a professor of constitutional law and government at Columbia University uh, and an assistant counsel to the governor of the state of New York. And I have to reiterate what everyone said, I'm very excited to be doing this today, especially on video. Um, so you know, good luck and, and we look forward to talking to you. Could you guys introduce yourself, please? I'm Kelsey Prather. I'm a junior at Clay County High School. My name is Emily Hayes. I'm a senior. I'm Autumn Stone, a senior at Clay County High School. Um, and our teacher is Mr. Phil Dobbins. All right, so we're going to start with question three. That's what we're going to ask you. And I'm going to go ahead and read the question to you. And then we look forward to hearing your uh, prepared statement. So question three. Aristotle asserts in politics that it is not the form of government, the rule by the one, the few, or the many that matters most, but rather the ends of government that are most important. Where in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution did the framers set forth the ends of government? How did the framers differ, if at all, about how the ends of government should be prioritized? Which of the ends of government set forth in the Declaration and Constitution appear to have the highest priority today. You may start. The Constitution, written in 1787, is the supreme law of the land, because no law may be passed that contradicts its principles. No person or government is exempt from following it. The ends of our federal government, as found in the preamble of the Constitution, are to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. And thus, the framers did ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. The ends of government can also be found in the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson stated that we, the, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Jefferson further explains that if any of these rights are compromised, the people have the ability to alter or abolish the government as they see fit. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution are symbols of the liberty that allow us to achieve success and of the equality that ensures that we are all equal in the eyes of the law. The Declaration made certain promises about which liberties were essential, but they didn't become legally enforceable until they were implemented in the Constitution. Both documents are based on the idea that all people have unalienable rights that governments are created to protect. Some examples being the rights of the accused in the 4th through 8th Amendments of the Constitution and in the 17th and 20th paragraphs of the Declaration. The framers set forth the ends of the government in the United States to be one of justice, peace, and strength. One frame where Hamilton mainly focused on security, and this can be seen by him simply signing the Constitution despite his beliefs. Benjamin Franklin, however, had strong feelings of securing liberty in which he said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. James Madison differed from both because he felt that justice was the most important end. James Madison says in Federal 51, justice is the end of government. It is the end of civil society. It ever has been and ever will be pursued until it is obtained, or until liberty be lost in the pursuit. However, the framers understood that they were entrusting future generations to give concrete meaning to those broad principles stated in the preamble. Drawing inspiration from Aristotle, the author of Politics, the framers were skept skeptical of his ideology of wisdom of the crowds. He stated that if people are not utterly degraded, although individually they may be worse, judges than those who would have special knowledge as a body they are as good or better. However, the framers saw this, use this as useful because all societies must evolve their governing, governing rules as needs change. No society can unflinchingly abide by a set of constitution constitutional rules in perpetuity. 
Even the U.S. Constitution was to be amended, and the process was stated in Article 5. In a study conducted by Pew Research Center in January 2018, 73% of American citizens said that terrorism originating from other countries should be a top priority for President Trump and Congress. With Trump's promised border wall being one of the most obvious examples, security is certainly one of the highest priorities for both the government and the American citizens. After the tragic events of 9-11, the Patriot Act was passed to further the priority of security. Another high priority within the United States is general welfare. In response to the currently spreading coronavirus pandemic, many events have been canceled in order to protect the people of the nation. Not only this, but many state governors have ordered schools and non-essential businesses closed to try and prevent a larger spread of the virus. The nation as a whole has been taking many steps in order to prevent the spread, especially since there's yet to be a reliable vaccine created for it. When talking about the ends of government, one must take into consideration the situation that the nation is currently in. Following 9-11, one could easily argue that external security was the main priority due to the recent tragedy that everyone just witnessed. However, currently the coronavirus pandemic has, been, has sent everyone into a mass havoc. Due to this, one will most likely argue in favor of general wel welfare as everyone's health and well-being is at major risk. Perfect. Thank you. That was very good for an opening statement for the first group. That was excellent. Um, I, you raised a really interesting point with the Franklin quote on giving up liberty for safety deserve neither. And I'm curious how you would address the current COVID situation and the different responses of the states with Franklin's um, question on liberty and safety. With the raising awareness about the liberty versus safety debate, I personally feel that in this situation, we should, of course, honor liberty that Americans are entitled to due to it being an unalienable right stated in the Declaration of Independence and, of course, enforced in the Constitution. However, I feel that safety is another priority because of the general welfare ends of government that is stated in the preamble. And so personally, I can see this debate essentially in Michigan, but also currently in Georgia now, since Georgia has, Georgia's governor, Brian Kemp has reopened some non-essential businesses such as gyms and nail shop, nail salons. And I personally feel that that was not the right move. However, you can't necessarily take away somebody's liberty. So that's arguably, justified in the protest against Governor Whitmer. But what about the liberty that you have to be safe and healthy? I mean, doesn't that factor into, isn't that part of the trifecta in the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments, life, liberty, property? I mean, yeah. life and liberty are right there together. So how do you, you know, square that, that edge? Personally, for me, it would have to be for each situation it would have to be different for each situation because each situation is different and you would need to in order to protect the fifth and 14th amendments of course go by them but also go by the current situation so currently we're in a pandemic where we need to protect people's health but also there is rights that people are entitled to so with protesting like governor whitmer they actually went to her house and they called it operation princess castle Queen's Castle, sorry. And what happened there was she ended up less in enforcing the stay at home order and put less regulations on that. And of course, it's more of like a give and take situation. Of course, like liberties are in indeed important, but however, we need to focus on safety so that these people can have that right to live a healthy life because that should be a given right. And we're taking these precautions and these measures so that we can remain safe and so that everybody can be happy and healthy. That's the main goal here. And I agree with my group mates that even though um, we, everybody deserves liberty and it's an unalienable right, it is very important for everybody to be safe. And that's also another right. Everybody has the right to safety and um, people should be able to yes, be able to go outside and do things they want, but not at the risk of others. With how big of a pandemic that is setting in, it is 
truly terrifying to think about people that are out on the streets with no protection and it's it's needed to protect other people uh, with the stay home orders. Okay, um, moving outside of government and the law and into society, civil society, the media, social media, culture, how do we as a people come to discuss and agree upon the ends of government? Or how well are we doing about agreeing and unifying as a, as a country, even before this crisis? Um, I think with the current major political divide that is going, out, going on in our country, it is um, giving way into our society and how everyone thinks. And I, for one, am for civil debate. And I think that it's not being used in a way that it should be. It's not being used properly. And people are so intent on getting their opinion out there and not listening to the opinions of others and how it affects societal life. And it's just causing a greater divide than we've seen in years. And definitely, I think the divide between Republicans and Democrats that's definitely something that is, the gap between the two parties is becoming more significant as the years go on, and especially in recent years, ever since the election of 2016 with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, there was such a huge divide, and people, in a lot of, I feel like a lot of people in the 2016 election made uneducated votes, because Donald Trump is somebody with such a charismatic voice, and he knows how to woo the people, and I feel like that's one of the reasons that he actually made it to the general election and was able to, to um, compete in the Republican spot. Reverting back to the thoughts of Aristotle, Aristotle said that humans are naturally political animals, so of course they are going to engage in their society and their government. Time. <laughs> go, go ahead and finish. Um, and he said that humans have this goal that they ought to achieve and that goal is happiness. So the ends of government essentially are around the idea of happiness based on Aristotle and which include liberty, safety, general welfare, justice, and domestic tranquility. Thank you guys very much. That was excellent for, for a, first, a first hearing in this new format. Um, you guys were very calm. You balanced well off of each other, I thought. You didn't interrupt each other. You each gave a different perspective. I thought that was very good. Um, and I, I really liked your, your comparing of Hamilton with Franklin with Aristotle. I thought you guys did a very good job in your opening statement. Um, and Kelsey, I thought you did a good job as well, in particular with bringing in Michigan and Georgia into um, your answer. You, you seem to know quite a bit about current events, and I thought that was very good. I, I think Franklin might have disagreed with some of your answers, um, but that's okay. That's why we're here. You know, that's why we're discussing these things. And, and the founders didn't agree amongst themselves, as you pointed out. They were very divided as well. So. Um, I think it's healthy to have debate, and I think that you guys did a good job with it. Yeah, I was uh, reading recently um, Franklin's uh, statement before he gave approval on the Constitution, and uh, it was clear that, you know, he felt that there was so much disagreement and so much that he didn't like about it, um, but he also thought it's as, it's as perfect as anything is, is ever going to get. And um, I think that you guys had a sort of a, that kind of very honest and genuine reflection on not just what you've been reading and preparing, but also in the time that you're living. And you, you weren't afraid to make it relevant for yourselves. And that's really admirable. You never, um, I always respect so much more people who 
engage with what they're doing and reading in a way that's that's real for them and in a way that they care about the society and the time that they're living in and not just trying to master the content. You guys definitely showed that and I wish you the best, truly. Yeah, Miss Stone, Miss Prather, Miss Hayes. I mean, that was extraordinary. And to see three young women who know so much information about a difficult topic is very heartening. And and I have to say, um, you know, I pushed on the liberty question because I think one of the things, and you hit the nail on the head, all of you did. Uh, one of the things about the liberty question is, I think the word in some ways has been appropriated in, in a different fashion than we can think about it, because there's also a liberty to be protected in your health, right? It just depends on who's speaking. And I love how we were able to get into the ends of government. Your answers were really on point. And then I have to say, I love the fact that you saw the time card and you closed on Aristotle, which is where we started. I definitely noticed that. Very impressive. This is exactly how I want to try to kick off a Zoom event like this. Um, you should be very proud of yourselves. And I just wish that we were in a room where we could all clap for you. So congratulations. That was incredible. Great work. Congrats to your teacher. Well, of course, we, we can still applaud for them. <laughs> Nicely done, guys. All right. Well, truly.